Hi everyone and welcome to a new episode with me, Danny. In today's episode, we will start into advanced Google Analytics. The idea of the next videos is to take you one step up from the uh, beginners to intermediate level. I want to, uh, in every episode, I want to focus on a particular area inside of Google Analytics and talk more in detail about it. If you're somehow beginner uh, in Google Analytics, I suggest that you uh, watch my previous video for the beginners uh, level and if not then you've come to the right place today is the first episode in the advanced series and to talk, today we will start by talking about the view settings inside of Google Analytics in the administration if you're up for it it's a short video but I have to take it out of my way we will see you right after this Welcome back. Let me go directly into my administration inside of Google Analytics by clicking on the bottom left hand side. Remember, moving forward, we will try to uh, minimize giving a lot of details around navigation because I'm assuming that you know your way around Google Analytics. So the section of today's video is around view settings. And the idea is to make sure that this setting is very well set up before you start using Google Analytics. It's very important that you set up everything perfectly right from the beginning. The reason is most of the setup inside of Google Analytics is not retroactive, which means if you make a change, that change will not be applied to the previous data because the the data has already been processed before you actually made your change. So it's essential that you start making your changes and start making your setup correctly right from the beginning. In regards to view settings and today's episode, I want to uh, focus on this section, which is excluding URL query parameters. This means that if you are using third-party software such as Marketo or uh, Optimizely, sometimes what they do, such software, they inject extra parameters at the, begin at the end of your, of your URL, and that is in terms of query parameters. If you know these query parameters, you want to mention them right here uh, and separate them by commas, because if you do that, they will not appear inside of your Google Analytics. They will not pollute your view, and that's essential. So here are some of the variables that I'm aware of. Again, depending on your software that you're using, there might be different parameters. So let's start by uh, mentioning here the Marketo variable, which is MKT underscore T OK. That's for token. That's one variable. Another one that I'm aware of is inf contact underscore key. And there is also the A L I L D. And so on and so forth. Sometimes you have a variable which you don't really uh, need to exclude, but you actually want to keep in your data. In that case, you don't mention it here. And I'm talking specifically about uh, the search parameter, query parameter, which is the S. Sometimes you don't want to exclude that, so you don't need to mention it here. Another thing you really need to do when you're setting up your view settings is clicking on the exclude all hits from known bots and spiders. This is one of the first ways to ensure that your Google Analytics is, I can't say free of spam, but at least filtering out some of the spam. And that is according to Google. They have a bunch of bots and filters that are they are aware of. And if you check that box, they'll try to uh, clean it up a little bit. Hang on, 
that's not all. If you want more security around uh, filtering your Google Analytics from spam, then you have to watch my advanced video around uh, spam filter removal. It's a very important video. I'll mention uh, three to four steps that you have to do in different areas of Google Analytics to ensure that you don't get spam inside of your Google Analytics. This is one way of doing it. Now, once you're done, if you have an AdWords account, this is the place where you need to link it. As you can see, I've linked my AdWords account right here, so that's good. And another section that you might want to uh, activate, in my opinion, and it's optional, and it allows you to select whether or not you want to track your user's search queries on your site. That's important. But remember, it's saying your own users. It's not Google organic search. This is only applicable if you have your own search box on your pages and people type in and search for things. Generally, this is applicable to WordPress websites where the search is an integrated feature of the platform. If you have that, then you're good. All you need to do is to turn this on. And again, this is another section. It tells me what is the query parameters uh, that are feeding in the keywords. In the case of um, in the case of WordPress, I believe it's the letter S. In some other context, if you've built your own uh, uh, search engine on your website, it could be keyword or it could be some other variable. Speak to your developer. Or your programmer and ask them what is the particular variable that feeds into the search engine and again there is an option to strip query parameters out of the URL and it's telling me that the query parameters that you use on your site can be identified your user search queries so you can select to strip that parameter from your URL in your reports it's up to you I generally would like to keep it, but sometimes, again, depending on uh, your particular usage, you might want to strip it away. Let me take it out for this case. And then you have another optional section, which is site search categories. This is, again, another level of uh, complication inside of your search engine, and that is if you ask the user to select a certain category when they are searching because in uh, some search engines you're allowed to let's say select whether you're searching the blog or you're searching uh, the pages or you're uh, searching a forum on your website so if you have that categorization you can uh, check this one as well and provide the a query parameter that defines which category the user is searching within again you have the option to strip it out if you need to. Once your settings are confirmed, you click on save and you are on the right path. This section has been set up properly. Uh, again, from before, we have set up the domain and also the view name. And remember, with views, you are not restricted to one view and my advice has always been to create at least three views one that will be uh, the view which will uh, it contain all of your data which we call the raw uh, uh, unfiltered view and then a main view which we call the master view uh, which includes data that has been slightly filtered and processed in order to give you more accurate data, such as uh, removing employees that, uh, that access your website. Probably you're a big organization and you don't want your employee uh, page views and sessions to uh, pollute your data. In that case, your master view is the view that you might want to refer to by default and that will include some filters which will filter out your employee IP addresses. Another view you can create is a test view where you conduct certain experiments in order to ensure that your uh, setup or your different uh, 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 settings that you're applying are actually working correctly. 
you probably want to test it out first and if it works fine then you roll it into your master view this is all i can say about view settings i hope uh, you enjoyed today's video and you learned a thing or two. If you did, please make sure you subscribe to my channel, webog.com, and also uh, hit the uh, notification button if you want to be notified every time I post a new video around Google Analytics, digital marketing, and coming soon, Data Studio. A perfect way of reporting uh, all of the data that we are getting from Google Analytics if you want to send it out to your uh, stakeholders or to your customers. Until a new episode with me, Danny, take care.